Good morning, my name is Christopher Johnson. I'm the president of MediaWorkstations.net and we are here at SIGGRAPH 2015. Uh, I'm with Jeff Kember, who is a cloud solutions architect for Google, and Jeff is here to talk with me today a bit about their service and how it applies to visual effects professionals. Um, Jeff, I'd like to just start out by uh, asking you a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are today. Great, thanks. Yeah. Um, I've uh, worked in the film industry for, uh, for a number of years. I've had the pleasure of working at companies such as uh, Pixar and Blizzard and ILM, as well as uh, most recently as a computer graphics supervisor at Framestore, and uh, I've uh, decided to make a transition into working with Google for their cloud platform in order to assist companies and individuals in doing visual effects work and feature animation and gaming work on the cloud. Great, that's wonderful. And specifically, as far as the service itself goes, I understand it's called Zinc. Can you talk a little bit about what you're offering in the service? Absolutely. Um, we have a couple different offerings. For, um, for large companies, we have custom solutions. So if you have your own rendering pipeline or your own queuing system or there's software that you, that you run that's proprietary, we have custom solutions for that, which are VMs, virtual machines, which just we can extend over our open VPN network onto the cloud, and you're able to um, burst or run sustained workloads. For medium-sized companies, uh, we have a slightly different tool set of different file systems and such. Um, but for smaller customers, um, uh, individuals, uh, groups of people who you, you might have an art department in a, in, a, um, uh, in a larger design firm that's doing concept work, you may have an architectural group, uh, you may have a, a small game company uh, producing cinematics. Um, for that, we have Zinc, and we have a general availability of beta for that at this point. Um, it's just being released at this, uh, right now. It supports Nuke and Maya, and within Maya, you can render to V-Ray, Arnold, and we're announcing RenderMan this week. So we're excited about adding Great. Pixar's RenderMan. We have, we think, the top three renderers available. Um, so really excited about that opportunity. It's a pretty great system in the fact that you can download a plugin and you choose what, what it is you want to be able to render on. The price is listed, you can choose the size of the virtual machine you want to use, whether it's a normal VM or one of our preemptible VMs that are 70% off, they're 30 cents on the dollar, so there's a good savings there. Um, you can look at our website for, the, for kind of how the PVMs work, but uh, um, once you click the button, your scene gets encapsulated and then sent up to the cloud and there's a file system in the cloud that um, is persistent, so you don't have to send the entire scene every time you make a change. So if you move the light a little bit and click again, just that change scene goes up. You can spin up a, a fixed number of machines that you've specified in the interface, and then your render frames start coming back. There's a web interface that shows you, like a queuing manager, exactly which frames are coming down, and the frames arrive back at your machine. That's great, it's wonderful. So it's a CPU comp, comp solution. Correct, yes. Um, yeah, the three renders I mentioned, we're running the CPU variants of those, and it enables an artist who has a, a laptop and maybe a desktop to be able to render um, from either of those machines to the cloud and they can scale up and get 50 nodes or 100 nodes and the interface allows you to select how many you want. So it's really amazing in the fact that you know, rendering that I would do that would take days of you know, my machines at home churning away and you'd come back and get a frame or two, um, you can get an entire scene done in, in a couple of hours or less. That's wonderful. Have you, um, what about latency? It always seems to be an issue when people talk about using the cloud. Have you, how, what's your experience so far with that? Right. Well. Um, there's a lot of data centers on the planet, and uh, many of them for Google run Google Compute Engine and Google Cloud Platform. So you're in a scenario where um, pretty much wherever you are on the planet, um, you're able to, well, really wherever you are on the planet, um, you're able to click your encapsulate button and the files will get sent. Um, because there's a file system on the cloud, um, all, all of the data that you're rendering goes to that file system, and then the local render machines just access it locally. So you, and, and the way the scene gets encapsulated, you're not sending a ton of small files. The, 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 the files are moved in a very efficient fashion. So that, that means you're only paying latency on that on that initial bit, and then the rest of it is just flowing up at whatever line rate you're working with. Oh, that's great. And do you guys also provide an asset storage solution as well? Um, at this time, uh, for the Zinc product, uh, there is a opportunity to maintain a, uh, a persistent file system on the cloud um, for whatever period of time you wish to be working on those scenes. You can choose to turn that off, um, and then there's no cost at that point. And when you turn it back on, you can resync your files. For custom solutions, um, um, we have a number of file systems that we offer. We have a, a single node filer, um, we have the Avir product, uh, and Avir is fantastic. It is a well-known industry product that many visual effects companies and financial and genomics and other industries have on-premises. And it's a, a, a the on-premises physical box is a box you install typically between your file system. So if you're NetApp, your Isilon, your Hitachi BlueArc, you'll put a, um, an Avir in front of that, and then you'll have 
a ton of render nodes, a ton of compute nodes. And as file, as the render nodes are requesting files, so for visual effects, if everyone wants to read the dinosaur toe texture at the same time, it gets read once to the Avir, and then 10,000 machines can read it all, and the Avir just distributes it right out of memory. So we've taken that, and Avir has moved that to the cloud. So mm -hmm. the cool part about this is, Instead of working with physical appliances, you're able to work with virtual appliances in the cloud. And the Avir will have, at the minimum, a three-node cluster. And you can scale that by just clicking a button. And it'll go four, five, and you can add it up to 30 or more. So you can have hundreds of terabytes of storage on the cloud available for tens or 50,000 plus nodes to be able to, of course, I should say, be able to hit some things. Wow, that's fantastic. And have you done like any test scenarios with Maya or with Nuke? Uh, we were testing the, the, the um, what do you call it, the uh, latency? Yeah, um, latency hasn't been a problem um, for customers using the Zinc product um, mm -hmm. in the fact that um, you, you're, you know, if you're in London, the Belgium data center is less than 10 milliseconds away, um, and you know, pretty much anywhere you are in North America, you're not more than about 40 milliseconds away from, from, from the data center. And that's, that's you know, really, you're, you're sending the files to the cloud, the compute occurs, and then the files get delivered back to you. So you're not really worried about an interactive, um, you know, you're still working with your local session, so you're not worried about tumbling a scene and then moving a mouse and clicking and trying to move a vertice um, as, as you would if you were working with a remote desktop session. So the right. system's been architected, um, uh, in a visual effects facility, by artists, for artists, um, and it, it really is a, um, a straight-ahead solution for that. The, um, the custom solutions we offer, in addition to that, um, we, we have, as I mentioned, different solutions available depending on your latency. Mm -hmm. uh, for customers that are in London, they can direct NFS mount their machines in Belgium. For customers who are in Mumbai working with a Taiwan data center, uh, we put a file system in the cloud and then we do an asset sync there. Oh, I see. So we, we have some ranges of latencies we work with, but we have customers who are 150 plus milliseconds away who are on you know, far remote outer reaches. Um, Madagascar. That kind of thing, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, uh, and they're successfully running on us without a problem. So I, I think, I think you know, we can't fix the speed of light issue, um, right. but, but we're certainly opening additional um, compute wherever we can in order to, uh, to make sure it's as close to customers as possible. Wonderful. Last question would be, in terms of like the actual service and how you're offering it to customers, who do you think the ideal uh, customer is? And um, is this going to be more, uh, is it going to be like a contract or subscription service, or is it going to be on a job by job basis? Great question. Okay, um, so uh, starting kind of um, uh, small, small to large, um, Zinc is our offering that enables people to run on a per minute basis. So if you, um, if, let's say you have a 300 frame shot of a, of a dinosaur and a robot fighting, for instance, um, in that in that shot you can specify that you want to have 50 machines fire up, and you can click the button. Those 50 machines will fire up and they'll all do about six frames worth of compute. You could have all 300 machines fire up simultaneously and that all render one frame. Uh, the magic of Google Cloud Platform and Zinc is built on top of it is when you run with Zinc, it's one price for storage, one price for compute, and one price that includes the render license. So you don't have to bring anything. You just have to have your local version of Maya with a copy of V-Ray or Arnold or RenderMan. And you can click a button and you, you only pay per minute. So after the first 10 minutes of compute, it's per minute. So if your render took 62 minutes, you wouldn't pay for two hours, you'd just pay for 62 minutes. If the renders all come off at about 17 minutes, but one of them takes two hours because it's a motion blur up close shot, yeah. um, you're paying 17 minutes for each of the renders. You pay actual time on the machines to the minute, and that's it for Zinc, which is great. Yeah. Um, for, for larger customers who are using our custom solutions, um, the, 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 we have permanent billing for everybody. We have a sustained use discount. So as you use the machines for a longer period of time, you pay the lowest price at the end of the month. So if you use the machine for three and a half weeks, um, you get this nice ramp down in price. You don't have to worry about, you know, did I sign a commitment or a contract or did I, you know, um, reserve? And, and you, know, you don't have to, you just get the VMs you need and use them as you wish to use them, spin them up, spin them down, you pay the per minute costs, and then at the end of the month, Google calculates the lowest cost curve for you for your usage for that month, and you pay that. Great. As I referenced earlier, we also have preemptible VMs, uh, and those are machines that, that you are available for, for up to 24 hours. So when you spin up a virtual machine, it's yours for up to 24 hours, and there's a small chance it could be taken back. Um, if there's, a, um, if there's a, a desire on Google's part to use that machine for something else, they'll give you a 30-second warning and take the box away, mm -hmm. but they're giving it to you at 70% off, so you're only paying 30 cents on the dollar. 
car, so it's an wow. incredible discount. So if you have a bunch of effects elements and some volumetric fog rolling through your scene, right. and, and, and the renders take anywhere from 20 minutes to two hours. Any particle seems like that. Any particle seems like that. So you, you, can, you can spin up a couple hundred machines, do this uh, quick render, and then pull them off. And statistically speaking, there's a high likelihood you won't have any machines pulled away. Um, but at the same time, uh, for really long running renders, if you don't have checkpointing enabled, um, you know, I, I wouldn't encourage people to run like a, you know, a 19 hour render that doesn't save its progress as it goes. Yeah, yeah. So for those kinds of jobs, we put people on normal VMs. So we wanted to offer the choice for people who have scheduling flexibility um, or have jobs that run a little bit shorter in time period, the preemptive VMs are great. One strategy you can use is you can spin them up to do your renders and then spin them down and spin up new ones and spin them down. So, um, and if one goes away, it doesn't mean that there aren't any more. It just means that that machine was needed for something else. Yeah, that's great. Well, I think it's one of the one of the dictionary definitions of Google is easy to use, right? Very simple, very straightforward. You have choices. Um, it's not a subscription service, so users are not going to be tied into anything. Correct. They're going to really be able to specify, you know, um, first diagnose what their needs are and then just set it up within the interface. So um, I think that's going to do it for today. Jeff, thank you for stopping by to talk with us this morning. Really appreciate you sharing um, in more detail what Zinc has to offer visual effects professionals. So folks, please check our YouTube video. It should be up in the next 24 hours. Uh, again, this is Christopher Johnson, president with MediaWorkStations.net. Thanks for watching. Thank you.